Chapter 6. There were tools scattered everywhere, and Freddy had to push them out of the way just to make a place for me. I was sitting on a makeshift love seat that had been yanked from the back of somebody's minivan. I was sitting on my hands because they were cold. I was cold. I doubt it had much to do with the temperature. I looked around me. Tire irons, wrenches, drill bits, glue guns, nuts and bolts, car parts, radiator fans, motorcycle exhaust pipes, shovels, rims, washers, engine parts. It was all there, barely room for bodies. And my body felt so soft and weak, what with all that steel and metal around. I just kept looking at the irons and comparing them against my arms and legs. How easy it would be for him to split me wide open. I guess I hadn't yet fully come to trust the man. My neck was still sore from his forearm. He asked me if I wanted something. I shook my head. Huh? I shook my head again. You sure? I shook my head. Much more shaking in my head might be dislodged. Don't go nowhere, he said. He went out the front and swung the two door panels back together and shut me in there. Me and the tools in dim orange and yellow light. I waited. I wondered if this was a test to see if I would run. I was full of adrenaline and I could have run. He hadn't locked me in there. I would have heard the lock just as I heard him unlock it. I would have heard the two by four come down across the door. I could have run. I didn't. I waited for something to come over me. Surely I would finally experience the universal human emotion my stepmom and dad and all my friends in the mountains had described to me on so many occasions. And then, for once in my life, I might be human. I might be normal. Free from the voices in my head. Now give me my fair share of fear. Come on, gods and goddesses. But that fear I hoped was my birthright never arose. And I waited right there, though I knew I could jump up and push out into this crazy new world. Possibly get away from this strange yet familiar man. I was so far from frozen with that sap which I now know penetrates the lifeblood, the human lifeblood, at the time of greatest calamity, froze up and the body turned to stone. But here I was and nothing happened. Sitting there on some old beat up soccer mom car seat upholstery, all alone but for a little orange-yellow light cast over the metal and wood interior of a shack no bigger than a cell. I found myself without worry, more and more relaxed. Waiting turned into anticipating, excited for whatever was to come, excited for a future, pried out of my mourns. I rubbed the palms of my hands along the cushions beneath my legs, I guess me and this car love seat got something in common. I was daydreaming at night when Freddy came back with a big gulp of Dr. Pepper and he shared it with me. I guess he knew I was dying of thirst. He had a big bag of those neon orange corn puffs you find at the store. He offered me some, but I passed. You gotta eat, he said, but he didn't try to force them on me. I would come to know that wasn't his style. As much as he wrenched me right out of my life, he might never force me again to do anything. Freddy was about as live and let live as some dudes are about live and let die. I didn't know him for many old ignorant fool, but I already liked him and the strange feeling like family I never knew I had. Maybe I was ready to start making my own Hallmark cards around the clock for a year. Yeah, then open my veins in a Sylvia Plath bath.